guys, Sensei George here. Today, we're going over staff techniques. Specifically, we're gonna be going over how to spin the staff so that we can defend ourselves or use it aggressively to move through a group. So the name of the technique is called bow footy. That technique had originated in the fashion of attacking our opponent in a way to knock his sword off center when this is used in samurai combat on the battlefield. And it's also used as a fashion to keep an opponent at bay by having this huge weapon spinning around that makes them you know, think twice about moving in and getting struck by it. Uh, the hardest part uh, to get struck by is gonna be the end because it's just like a baseball bat and at the end of the weapon will be the strongest point to have the most power of uh, impact. So by using that, you can keep a person at bay and prevent them from entering and being fearful of that strike coming in. Okay, now, Bow Furry is a wonderful technique. It's used for our pull arms, it's used for uh, staffs, and it's also used for anything that you can get your hands on in a moment of crisis that happens to be of similar length of, say, a six foot staff, a three foot staff, and just a little bit shorter. But when it starts getting really small, there's no point in doing that, okay? So we're gonna go over the technique on how to do Bow Furry now. So the first thing that you wanna do is, if you're my focal point and I'm facing you, I wanna turn my body sideways and grab the staff in thirds. I'm not gonna turn my body sideways so you can see it better. So by holding it in this fashion, what I would then do, I refer to this uh, posture as motorcycle, okay? Because we all like to you know, ride, I ride Yamaha, keep it real. So from this position, I then go to baseball. So I lift up with my front hand, let go, and then re-grab it into a baseball posture, okay? So let's review that motorcycle it's a baseball now that I hit the baseball stance what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it down and then get my golf swing together and come up from underneath okay so I have motorcycle to baseball to golf okay now to do it on the other side I'm gonna have to step now I do that and I'm gonna reset so I'm gonna face you one more time and now I'm gonna go from one side to the other and then pause so I start in that motorcycle fashion, baseball, and then I go to golf, I step forward, step back, and I end in this position. And now that first hand that grab and re-grab, I'm gonna push it down some, and then grab and reset to motorcycle, yeah? So let's do that one more time. Motorcycle, baseball, golf, back to motorcycle, yeah? And then motorcycle, baseball, golf, switch your feet again, reset. Now the main thing to pay attention to with the hand switching is just whichever hand starts doing all this, finishes all the way up to the reset. So keep your eyes on my left hand this time. Left hand grabs a motorcycle, left hand throws up the baseball, let's go, re-grab, I step and swing. Now my left hand still does the reset. Now it's my right hand's turn. Right hand lifts up the uh, baseball let's go swings and golf and then resets yeah that's a very important part is that I now have this going in a pattern in which I can relax and keep it going at a steady pace yeah and then you want to be able to focus on the target ahead of you and not necessarily be looking at your hands figuring out what you're doing and just trust your body to let everything move in motion now, one other important aspect to bring up about this is the footwork. When initially training it, what you're gonna have is a triangle that comes together. So I step, I swing, I attack. I step, I swing, I attack. By me having this triangle, I create a point in which the bow converges at the, t at the uh, tip of the triangle. Yeah? So if my opponent's sword work was here, I would strike it, I'd strike it again. I strike it, I strike it again. And I would throw it off center, and then once I knock his sword offline, I'd step back in and strike him in the head or hands and render him uh, harmless for me. <laughs> okay? So that is the essence of bow furry and how we would use it. Again, motorcycle, baseball, golf, motorcycle, baseball, golf. And look at this point. I will have it in the center of me the whole time where the points cross and I'll strike my opponent's sword in front of him. Okay? 
and you can just get faster and faster. This is just the first level of boat furry. There's about four to five of them in which I can help you improve and apply these skills in different fashions. This is just the basics, okay? So be sure to check in for uh, the videos that will lead on from this so that you can improve your bow and apply it in a number of different manners. This, just get this down for now, train it, get good, and expect the videos to come out next time, okay? So you will be able to apply this in a number of scenarios and we're gonna get ready to go over a few different uh, stabs and weapons of opportunity that you may have and how to use them correctly. Okay? So what I have here are my array of uh, staff weapons that I like to use. So I have a hickory grade impact bow staff. Uh, I, I hate that term bow staff, okay? But it's what everyone knows. Bow staff, when it's translated, means staff staff. It's uh, Japanese and English, and it means staff staff. I don't like it. The correct term is Rokushaku bow. It means six foot staff. Then I have the octagonal staff. Uh, the reason that I like the octagonal more is because it has these points and the points become smaller so the point of impact will become smaller and harder. Versus a wider surface area, you have a smaller surface area point of impact. And then I have a, a three foot staff which I like to compare to people's running sticks and brooms. Yeah? So now what we're gonna go over real quick is uh, running sticks. A lot of people in my community go jogging and they choose a stick to run with. Most of the time, it's a nice wooden dowel rod that they can have and confidence in go jogging with in case someone were to come up and feel like they could whack them. Yeah? Now, while I love the wood, try out PVC. You can make it uh, a whole bunch of different colors, but there's a very good reason to choose this. Because it is hollow, it's actually going to be able to be lighter and you're not going to get fatigued from carrying it. Uh, it's almost like a baton when you're running. And here's the other aspect. When you're using wood, if I were to hit someone in the head with that, what it would do is actually cause a crater in their skull and do a lot of irreparable damage. Now, if you're a bit of a pacifist and you're not trying to do uh, enough damage where you're gonna regret it for the rest of your life on to another human being, this is also another good reason to use this weapon because it is flexible, okay? See that? Upon impact, it'll flex and it'll still cause tons of damage because while you may not be hitting harder you're hitting faster, they won't see it coming. Because it's lighter, you're gonna be able to move it quicker and be able to strike someone with it. And now to apply bow furry, you can even move faster with it. So if someone were to come at you, you may not you know, have that energy to go ahead and swing or you're you know, scared. But if you start spinning it, it's gonna keep them away. If they pulled out a knife on you and you have this, it's gonna make them think twice about moving in. They may even just say, oh man, you know, this isn't the one I wanna mess with today. Be a wolf, not a sheep. Be guarded and actually know how to use the weapons that you carry around. By doing this, you could knock the knife out of the dude's hand, but you can also scare him. If there were a group of people and they confronted you while you had your stick, you could do a bow furry and run and try and get through a group of people all together. And they're gonna see the flurry of a stick not knowing what it's made out of expecting it to hurt and getting out of the way the other thing you can do is of course using a figure eight motion while running through someone and you could probably have a lot more confidence in that when you're first developing but if you got your stick closer to your body it's something that you could be able to do and apply i like both uh, i definitely say play around with this one more the figure eight slashes just to get a dude out your way and uh, have consecutive strikes if they have a knife though, and you do one swing and you miss, they can move in. It's one of the reasons I like bow furry is because again, it keeps the person at bay. I can use this to keep that space. So this is one of the reasons I like the PVC. It's lighter, it's flexible, less damage. And you can go running with it, and people with seeing it as a bright color definitely won't view it as a weapon as much. More weapons of opportunity. Okay, so here I have brooms. Everyone uses brooms. They're sweeping, they know what they're doing with them. However, very rarely do they think about how can they use this broom as a weapon to increase their likelihood of surviving an instance in which they may be in danger. So especially if you're using a broom as a part of your job, okay? Say I work as a janitor and now I'm worried about like a conflict of something or someone just like popping off one day, I have a weapon of opportunity that I now have trained with and feel comfortable utilizing in an instance of danger. So this is important in how to 
review your surroundings and make certain investments. Because I'm gonna tell you about why I would choose the old style broom over the new style broom. So the new style broom is very nice. It's light and very easy to swing around. But however, because of that design, it loses a few points. It loses points in durability because this handle, I can actually knead in half if I wanted to and bend it uh, because it's a lighter grade of aluminum. And that really makes it suck. And a portion here is that it's actually screwed on with the head, it's screwed on to the uh, handle, which means that it'll be likely easy to break upon impact because that screw is the only piece uh, keeping it intact upon impact if I were to hit someone with it. Now, when we go look at the older style, it's a solid full tang wooden handle, okay? It goes through all the way. And then they have a series of wire wrapping holding the straw intact. Yes, the straw may become damaged, but I'm not gonna be worried about that in a one-time encounter. Um, the handle will still hold and not break. And if it does break, I'll get a sharpened uh, tool from that. Versus if this breaks, it bends in half, and then I have a lunked over piece of metal that I'm trying to whack someone with. So uh, that's an important thing and reason that I choose the traditional style broom over the older style. That, that. So now and how to use this. What you're gonna notice is that I like to hold what I'm gonna to refer to as the blade side forward in the beginning of my techniques because I want to think about how I can use this as a method of striking. But then when I start moving it throughout the rest of Bow Furry, I can now strike down using the head of the blade. I can strike from underneath during the transition. But now what's gonna happen is that when I come on the opposite side, the blade is gonna be on the uh, Close, side closest to me and I'll be striking with the handle but it's going to switch each time and what I want to be mindful of that so that I can choose when I want to come out with the handle and come into the strike so that's a reason uh, that you should be mindful of how you're using a broom to do bow furry because it's going to become imbalanced and if you don't adapt for that say I stay back in the middle I'm not using the length of the weapon that's when someone can move in and get closer to me but I like to stretch out and use the bow appropriately the whole entire time, okay? So that's the reason about how I would use the broom in that fashion. Now let's also talk about the impact, okay? If I were to strike someone with this broom, I wanna come down at a diagonal and use this like a blade. Reason being is because it minimizes the surface area and it would have a stronger force of impact. It's also the heavier side of the broom. So because of that, it'll hurt more, and then it'll be a finer strike. If I were to hit someone with the flat end of the broom, it won't deliver as much of a strike. Coming down at an angle, it'll chop right in through the muscle hole and it'll hurt a lot more. But what you also wanna be mindful of is that I have bristles, okay? Use every bit of the weapon of opportunity that you have. If someone were to come in at you, you can thrust and use the bristles to poke into their eyes. And these are a lot more penetrative, penetrative, <laughs> and uh, they'll like move around and probably poke them in the eye. So in that instance of, you know, you're sweeping, be mindful of how you hold your broom. Okay? It's very similar to our baseball grab. So once I pull it up, I'm already set up to do the baseball strike and start flowing into Bo Furry again from a few other things. Okay? So just be mindful of how you're using your weapon and then how you want to strike initially with it or pull back and then start all over again with the blade side forward just by switching sides. It becomes one motion. So that was a brush, and then I step back. I can switch my hands. There's a number of different ways that you can do this, but your body is gonna dictate the best way for you. Is that how you can practice doing this, and then switch, strike, and then continue flowing into Bopuri. But also saying, if I'm sweeping like this way and someone tries something on me, how to flip this up quickly, and jab them in the eyes with the bristles, and then, step forward, strike, or start setting up everything else for what we've been showing before. So that was sweep, poke the guy in the eye, set up for motorcycle, base, ah, motorcycle, baseball, golf, and start moving through everything, okay? So one more time, sweeping with that motion, okay? Motorcycle, baseball, golf. And my target of choice, the groin, okay? So if I were to sweep in that motion one more time, and this would be the final bit of this, it's sweeping, popping up the motorcycle, baseball, right between the legs. Okay? Swing up, send him down, kick him away, and you're on your day. So now that I've taught you how to you know, sweep the floor with your opponent, uh, hopefully you guys will subscribe, 
like comment let me know what you guys want to see and stuff below remember this is before level one i'll be back with more to show you guys how to level this up show you some drills and show you how to make bow furry a very lethal and aggressive tool that you can add into your toolbox to prevent people from moving in on you depending on uh what weapons you have yeah this is sensei george thank you for watching